Hello friends, press the subscribe button and hit the bell icon for more such easy videos. Let's understand the structure of prokaryotic cell in detail. Prokaryotic cell, unicellular organisms, bacteria, blue-green algae, mycoplasma, PPLO. What is PPLO? It is pleuro-pneumonia-like organisms are included under this. So we need to draw a bacterial cell first. So I will be drawing three layers. One layer will be acting as the outermost glycocalyx. Second layer that will be there will be the cell wall inner to that. And then we will have something called as cell membrane. So these are the different layers. Well, no, in what we are going to do, we are going to eliminate certain parts. And that part will give rise to finger-like projections that is called as fimbrae. So this is how you can draw the bacterial cell in easy way. It's a typical prokaryotic cell. And here I will make a big one that will help in the formation of the flagella. So let's first draw the diagram and then discuss the structure of bacteria. This finger-like projection which is coming out it's called as fimbrae. And fibrae, the basic role of the fimbrae is attachment. So it helps in the attachment of one bacteria to the another. And bacteria, they show the presence of long hair-like structure. That hair-like structure is called as flagella. Bacteria can have one flagella that is monoflagellated. They can have two flagella that is biflagellated. Even they can have flagella surrounding their entire body that is called as polyflagellated, periflagellated. This plasma membrane, the inner layer is folded. It's towards the cytoplasm. It is going to form mesosome. So let's use different colors so that we can study all the different parts of the bacterial cell in detail. This is the first outermost layer of the bacterial cell called as glycocalyx. So whenever we talk about glycocalyx, remember it is the outermost layer. It is a macro molecule. It helps in adhesion, in sticking. Sometimes the glycocalyx is loose sheath, then it is called as slime layer. Or even sometimes it is a tough covering, then it is called as capsule. So this is about glycocalyx. Inner to glycocalyx, what we get? is the cell wall. So whenever it comes to cell wall, remember it is below the glycocalyx or I can say inner to the glycocalyx. It gives shape to the bacterial cell wall. It is made up of peptidoglycan. In eubacteria, the cell wall is made up of murin. In archaebacteria, the cell wall is made up of pseudopeptidoglycan. So generally in all the bacteria, the cell wall is made up of peptidoglycan. But in case of eubacteria, it is murin. And in case of archaebacteria, it is pseudopeptidoglycan. Inner to the cell wall, what we get is the cell membrane. Cell membrane is made up of lipid and protein. It is innermost layer that is connected to the cytoplasm. It is made up of lipid protein. It is selectively permeable. It means it allows only selected substances to pass through. Some part of the cell membrane will extend in the cytoplasm and it will form a structure called as mesosome. This dot dot structure represents the cytoplasm. So let's understand the cytoplasm of the prokaryotic cell or the bacterial cell. So whenever we talk about cytoplasm, it is semi-fluid ground matrix. Gel-like, I can say, made up of organic plus inorganic substances. They do not show cytoplasmic streaming. It means there is no movement of any of the component of the cytoplasm from one end to the another. And in the cytoplasm, there is no cell organelle present. So what is present? In cytoplasm, you will find ribosomes, nucleoid, inclusion bodies, etc. 
let's talk about the first important component that is called as mesosome so whenever i talk about mesosome first i need to understand it is nothing but the extension of plasma membrane in the cytoplasm and it has basically vesicles tubules and lamellae inside what is the role of the mesosome so we need to understand one thing exact function of mesosome is not yet known but still it is believed that it helps in dna replication now this mesosome basically it provides attachment for the dna attachment so this dna is basically called as nucleoid dna is present in the cytoplasm it is double stranded circular dna and remember very important for neat point of view there is no histone protein found in case of bacterial cell or a prokaryotic cell so nucleoid is double stranded circular dna which is the genetic material in the cytoplasm you will also find chromatophores chromatophores are nothing but these are colored pigments that will give color to the bacterial cell it is found in the photosynthetic and cyanobacteria there are different pigments present it is found in bacterial chlorophyll it is even found in bacterial theophytin carotenoids when we talk about next component of the bacterial cell it is the fimbrae so what is fimbrae fimbrae is nothing but it is finger like projections what it does it is meant for attachment so different bacteria if they attach to each other it is by the help of fimbrae the next important component that we see in case of bacterial cell is nothing but the inclusion bodies so what are inclusion bodies basically inclusion bodies are consist of the organic as well as the inorganic components there are storage granules present we have organic granules we have inorganic granules so organic basically is composed of starch and glycogen and inorganic is composed of phosphate and sulfate granules they store different kinds of food let's talk about the other component that is found in this cell cytoplasm that is nothing but basically ribosome ribosome is considered as a protein factory protein factory now this protein factory means it is involved in protein synthesis remember ribosomes are composed of rrna and protein in bacteria you will get 70s type of ribosome which is divided into two parts 50s and 30s we are not supposed to add these two s stands for swedberg's unit about ribosomes i will be mentioning when we study ribosome in detail in the cytoplasm we will find something called as plasmid what is plasmid it is the most important component in biotechnology world it is extra chromosomal double stranded circular dna it is apart from nucleoid found in the bacterial cell it may be present or even it may be absent it is also known as mini chromosome and this plasmid consists of antibiotic resistant gene as a result the bacteria they are resistant toward certain antibiotics because of this antibiotic resistant gene found in the plasmid and they also show fertility gene and they also show fertility gene which is involved in reproduction and this long hair like structure is called as flagella flagella is meant for locomotion so whenever you talk about flagella it is present in bacterial cell or even it can be absent if it is present bacteria will be motile if it is absent bacteria will be non motile whenever we talk about flagella remember it is a filamentous extension from the cell wall So if I have to draw the base part of the flagella, I will draw it in such a way that you will be able to understand how the flagella looks like and what it is composed of. So at the base you find these two plates, and finally we have the flagella. So these two plates that you are observing, 
the first one is the basal body and above to that is a hook and finally the flagella which is known as the filament whenever we talk about appendages that is found in the bacteria so there are different appendages the very first one is flagella and we have cilia pili fimbri flagella is long hair like structure helps in locomotion cilia is their small hair like structure again helps in movement of substances pili helps in the process of conjugation which means sexual reproduction fimbri helps in clinging to a support it means attachment to other bacteria 